Hello and welcome to my channel and welcome to this week's Thursday Thoughts in which I discuss my thoughts and impressions of the novels I've been reading this past week. I finished The Black Moon by Winston Graham, the fifth novel in the Poldark series. The setting of the novel is Cornwall in 1794. Elizabeth, Poldark's ex-sweetheart and widow of his brother Francis, is now married to Poldark's rival George Waldegan. When Elizabeth has a son by Waldegan, it serves only to accentuate the rift between the Poldark and Waldegan families. And when Morwenna Chinueth, a niece of Elizabeth's and now governess to Elizabeth's eldest son Geoffrey Charles, grows to love Drake Khan, Demelza Poldark's brother, the enduring rivalry between George Warlegan and Ross Poldark finds a new focus for enmity and conflict. The basic premise, I will not say plot, is the continuing antipathy between Ross and George as both look back on their rivalry for Elizabeth's love. The novel is a family saga and concentrates on the interactions of the different characters to one another. It is an involving saga as we follow the day-to-day -day concerns of the various characters and of how they interact and relate to one another. Here is an extract from page 112 to give you a flavour of the writing. Ross and his wife, Demelza, are speaking. So you think I did wrong, he said. How can I say? How can it be wrong to do what you believe is right? He had not told her that of the man likely to be appointed in his place. It was a splendid party, she said, but that Frenchman, Ralph Allen Daniel, is to be High Sheriff of Cornwall next year. D did you not hear them say it at the d d d dinner table? No. What is that? It sounds that impressive. Maybe they were vetting us, seeing how you could behave, and that I did not wear a tricolour as a, as a cravat. Valitort is the Lord Lieutenant's son. Old Mount Edgecombe, what did you think of him? I hardly spoke to him. I liked his wife. If that is high society, then I think I like it, Ross. An improvement on what I've seen before. Yes, it is a cut above the assembly ball. This is a stage at which the possession of money justifies itself by enabling its possessor to become urbane, cultured, refined and elegant. When this happens, there is probably no more enjoyable society in the world. I hope, what, that we shall be in it again sometime. I do not imagine that my refusal of this office will endear me to them. Those we met today are the progressives who in other times would be the reformers who pride themselves on openness of mind but I suspect that at this juncture even they will tend to reason that who is not for them is against them. It is a tendency in time of stress and war. At present the landed gentry of England are seeing the bloody revolution behind every drawn shutter. Oh well, she gave a little philosophic shrug. We have so much to be thankful for. It is not important. You have brought the list of what we are going to buy tomorrow? Yes, it is a foot long. Good. Then let's a think of that. G g good night, Ross. Good night. He snuffed out the final candle. The only light then was from the lantern in the passage, slanting in under the ill-fitting door. From downstairs came a loud murmur, occasionally interspersed by shouts from the taproom. They both lay quiet, thinking their own thoughts, and both knew that however much they bought tomorrow, However extravagant in their purchases they became, the events of today had taken the savour out of it. Rosser turned down the offer of being the local magistrate, and instead his enemy Warlegan is appointed to the post. This is a turning point in the novel and has repercussions for, for several of the characters in the novel later on. I'm looking forward to reading the sixth novel in the Poldark series, The False Ones. Now I'm going to concentrate on finishing The Prime Minister, the fifth book in the Palliser series by Anthony Trollope for Steve's read-along. I'm also reading Verdict of Twelve by Raymond Postgate, which I mentioned in Ten British Novels of the 1940s. 
A woman is on trial for her life, accused of murder. Each of the 12 members of the jury has his or her own burden of guilt and prejudice which could affect the outcome. I will review these two books next Thursday. So that's all folks, but I'll be back soon with another booktube video.